Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you my progress on the uh, Minecraft survival. I did record an episode earlier but I forgot to push the record button. So that was an hour of my time. Fun stuff. That's alright. Uh, that just means that I've got more to show you. So let's go down here and see if we can avoid the creepers like this guy. Run away! Good thing I've got knockback. There we go. You want some? Come on. And you're dead. Alright, I did knock down part of my uh, my sand dune here to make way for crops and one of the first crops that I built was my reed farm now this is only a 72 to 70 percent efficient reed farm based on the number of blocks per reed and the number of blocks per nothing I have staggered the water in order to maximize the surface area and so I can walk through here without falling in a hole I've covered the water with lily pads and it's really easy to just go through here and just knock down my reeds because as you guys know I need me some books I need to enchant some books all right and then I just walk around pick them all up very easy to do Not quite an automated reed farm, but still very, very efficient. Within that just few seconds here, I've already got me you know, nearly four stacks of reeds. Not too shabby in my book. Um, would like to try and build me a, a cactus farm. Um, not a whole lot of uses for cactus right now, but it's always nice to have it if you need it. Ooh, pick up my gunpowder. Alright, another project that I actually thought I was recording was this house right here. If you remember, I was breeding all my chickens right here in my chicken coop. Uh, at one time, an enderman stole a block and all my chickens escaped. It was kind of funny, kind of wish I was recording that particular episode. But, I decided instead of having a farm, I would build me a chicken shack. This is basically an automated chicken cooker All right. basically I have my adult chickens dropping their eggs into hoppers which goes down into a dispenser right there and then I can turn the machine on and it starts to dispense the eggs now once the baby chickens are grown they hit the lava fall into a couple of more hoppers Oop, there's a baby chick and they fall down here pre-cooked. So I can just come in here and grab a cooked chicken anytime I want. I can either dine in or carry out. Now, I am on the 14W02C update. And one of the... Alright, you hear that clicking? That means I'm out of eggs. So, so we'll turn that off. Otherwise, we'll just keep clicking away. One of the updates with the lava is the burn radius is a little bit farther. So after I built my automated chicken cooker, uh, my house caught on fire. Uh, I was rapidly trying to put it out. And uh, so I replaced the burned areas with stone. That's kind of just a patchwork at the moment, but I will probably replace all of it. Now up here at the top is where, even though it just looks like a chimney, it's actually for my adult chickens. I just drop them down inside and they become more adult chickens. I don't really need more than a dozen chickens though. For one thing, it gets too loud when I walk by. And another thing is I don't really eat a whole lot of chickens. So as you can see, I've got more cooked chicken than what I actually have. So I'm ahead of the game. Next, I want to show you that uh, I did finish my north wing of the 
a house. It's starting to turn into a mansion. This is going to be the library room. And as you can see, I've already got my first set of books. Well, you got to start somewhere. So eventually I'll have a nice round set of books. I'll probably have books lining the walls and just decorate it up really, really nice. I've also started a sheep farm. Now this particular sheep farm has every color of wool in the game, which makes it really, really easy to gather wool. Whatever color I need, I can come out here and just gather it. And I'll use the wool slabs on top of fences to just make it easy to get in and out. All I gotta do is just jump once and I'm in and out. But the sheep don't go anywhere. All right, very, very nice, small, compact design. And they're happy in there. I know they're happy. Over here, I have made my pig pen with all my pigs. Uh, eventually, I would like to go to the nether, get some soul sand, and replace all the grass with soul sand because it makes it look more like a dirty pig pen. You know, no other reason than that. Over here in this corner, I have my cow farm, which I've got a few cows going. I've only killed a few cows for their leather, but eventually I'm going to do some mass slaughtering. And just like my automated chicken cooker, I've thought about trying to see if I could build an automated cow killer, cow... Uh, eliminator uh, I'm not quite sure of a politically correct way of saying it but a faster way of collecting leather on the back side of my house here I decided uh, this blank wall was a good place for my vine farm so I can just come along here and just gather me some vines use my shears And then they'll grow some more. So I don't need a whole lot of vines. So I don't really need a whole lot of room. I don't need a whole lot of space. So that's kind of nice. Alright. I have done a little bit of exploring in the world. Uh, I had to go to the jungle to get me some cocoa beans. So I could make brown wool, brown sheep. And I picked up some melons while I was there. Uh, I also went to a spruce forest for some dark oak and spruce and grabbed some melons or excuse me pumpkins along the way. So I've got my pumpkins going. Uh, if you remember last week when we were clearing out our uh, egg carrying zombies, I went ahead and started following the tunnel and I ran across a skeleton spawner straight down here. Now, it's not too deep, so I've thought about making a really nice skeleton mob grinder. I've already cleared out all the moss stone. I've already cleared out the chests, which is where I got my diamond horse armor. So, since I got my diamond horse armor here, I just went ahead and put it on one of my horses. The second diamond armor I found at a spider spawner as I was coming back from the spruce forest. It was a surf surface dungeon. So now I have two 14 heart horses with diamond armor. I will probably be breeding them in the future, which uh, right now I just have them in a temporary pen, a little temporary holding facility. All right, this is my to-do list. Of course, one of the things you always have to do in Minecraft is kill the Ender Dragon. But before you can do that, of course, you've got to find a stronghold. Uh, a few other things, of course, like building the beacon, killing the weather boss. These are other projects that I've been wanting to do. All right, let's take a real 
Now, if you remember my sorting facility back here, I finally got all my trapped chests and I've got them all stacked up and organized really neat. Uh, once again, I'm trying to replace all the signs with frames so I can actually see what's in them. It's just more of an aesthetic thing. But all my cobblestone, my other stones, different types of mycelium, podzil, dirt, not all of these are full. They're just a location that I want to put things. Uh, a nice thing that... Uh, they've updated is the chiseled stone bricks you can now craft them uh, you don't have to find the three in jungle temples uh, my smooth, smooth stone glass bricks once I go to the nether I'll have my nether rack glowstone nether bricks quartz here are three new materials that they have added andesite diorite and granite which there is also a smooth stone counterpart so I've got room for those as well uh, most of my mob drops like the slime ball strings rotten flesh this is the uh, smelter that I showed you last week on how to build uh, spider eyes my other smelter uh, my loose Minerals. I'll gather up my loose minerals until I can turn them into blocks. And then, of course, redstone, that always deserves its own chest because of the amount that you have to do. Now, uh, lapis has become more valuable because of the new enchanting rules. All right, snow tools, all my armor, all my weapons. I've got a spot here for all my enchanted books. Uh, sorted by different levels. I don't really have a whole lot of books right now. All my foods such as fish, beef, fruits, breads. Uh, doors used to not stack but now that they've updated the game doors do stack I no longer need a dedicated chest for it so I'll probably just put it in my wood products. Fences even though they stack once I find an abandoned mine shaft, I usually raid it for all the fences and end up needing its own chest. All the different wood in the game, which I have pretty much at least one stack of each to get me started. And of course, I do have at least one stack or a few saplings of each of the trees. I will probably be planting these and breeding these and getting a whole bunch more. So that's my storage area right now. Uh, I will probably get me a potion stand in here. My infinite water source. Everything nice and neat, compact. Uh, eventually I'll get frames for everything. All right, as I said on the enchanting table, they've done some upgraded mechanics. When you go to enchant something, it now tells you what you're going to get. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. So no matter how many levels I try, the first one is at least going to be efficiency. And now it also costs lapis. One lapis, two lapis, three lapis to enchant. So that's one of the new things in the game. I have been exploring this dungeon down here. Or not, excuse me, not dungeon, uh, mine shaft down here. It goes all the way to a ravine. It is huge. Uh, I'm eventually going to try and connect this with my actual mine shaft so I can get rid of this surface uh, connection. All right, that's about everything that's new at the moment. Uh, as you saw, some of my future projects. I uh, still have a long way to go. They have tweaked the villager mechanics. So my little village trading project that I was going to do with the five major villagers was nerfed. They now have 11 villagers that you can trade with. And those 11 villagers are the only ones who can actually do the breeding uh, they call it in the mood. You cannot just have 
a lot of doors and a lot of villagers running around making little baby villagers anymore. You actually have to trade with a villager to get them in the mood to breed and then they breed and then you have to start over. You have to trade with them again to get them in the mood to breed. So I'm going to have to reevaluate and rethink how I'm going to set up a convenient trading slash breeding system for my villagers. I'm sure there's other channels that are already starting to figure that out as well. That's about everything I've got for this week. Uh, please leave a like. Please subscribe. Please share this with your friends. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, I do read them. Let me know uh, what you would like to see me build, what you'd like to see me do. And as always, I'll see you all next time.